should we talk about today then? I don't know, but you've got some strange contraption in front I've of you. I've got this. Look at it. That is all we're going to talk about. A sledge for a child. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a mask. Anyway. Do you eat yours with Chianto then, do you? Father beans normally. <laughs> We've got something to show you. Because um, I've had to buy a new suit. Why? Miruka suit, who was seven years old, I think, five, six, seven years old, something mm -hmm. like that. And um, cuffs had started to go on it and had to replace some of the zips. And, you know, people talk about warranties. And they yeah. say, Ruka's got a five-year warranty. Actually, didn't mean it very much at all when I had zips go on really? it. Really? Yeah, they went fair wear and tear. After wow. four years when it's gone, I'm like... But mm. how can that be fair wear and tear? If they guarantee it for a certain amount of time, every time you put it on, you do the zips up and down. Every time. There you go. So um, wow. I was a little bit upset by that anyway. Yeah, because that was an expensive suit. Very expensive. Yeah. So I had to look around because I I've got so many boxes you need to tick. On my last year of touring, I went from Croatia, Dubrovnik in Croatia, where it was 34 degrees, up to the Arctic Circle. Where it's four degrees. Minus 30 <laughs> So it's just like... And I bought, um, you know, one of these uh, vented jackets and so I had some actual BMW um, trousers that zip off into shorts and things like that, you know, so for, mm. for summer riding. But it wasn't really enough because when I wore that and it rained and it was just all awful, so I thought, well, time to buy a new suit. Now... Mm. I did like the Klim Badlands suit. Yeah. But And the Kodiak, like mine? The Kodiak one I really liked, but they don't do it. I think they've changed the name now on it. They don't oh, do okay. the, they, they don't do it. I think it's only in blue now. Is yours blue? No, it's black. They only do it in blue. So wow. I didn't, didn't necessarily want a blue one. Yeah. I think that's the case. I might be wrong now. You correct me if I'm wrong. So um, looked all over the place. And I came across the BO, B, BO, BMW Euroguard suit. Hmm. I've had rally suits before. Rally suits are brilliant. He even sold his rally suit and said, I sold it and now I've got this one. And then I ended up buying another jacket and he bought it in the wrong colour. <laughs> <laughs> and had to wear it until he sold it again. Anyway, so what I'm after is a jacket that gives me lots of venting possibilities. Mm -hmm. But it's also Gore-Tex or something similar. Yeah. And, you know, it's bomb-proof, just like the Rooker gear is. Now, Rooker gear, if you want to ride in the winter, Rooker gear is the stuff you buy. I would say this Euroguard is the same now. But the Rooker gear mm -hmm. is brilliant for inclement weather. However, if you take it down somewhere in the summer, it's baking. Mm. I, I remember my Rooker suit when I first went to Granada, southern Spain. It was... It was really quite impossible. I had to have that front open. It was really hot. It too was, hot. I mean, they're just they're just so hot. But in the UK, ideal. It's brilliant. My, whereas my Klim is brilliant in the heat, but you have to make sure you wear something underneath it in our country when it's cold because there's no heating. It just goes right through. So there we go. I uh, I thought I looked around and I came across the Euroguard suit. Now it's not very good because it's dark, but. This is my Euroguard suit, it's the jacket. We're getting to put it on in a minute. Get out of here. <laughs> okay, it's a bit like the rally suit in many respects, in mm -hmm. as much as it's got all sorts of vents all over it, but it is made, it's not this Gore-Tex thing, it's got something um, something similar. Well, let's, let me get the camera, because if I lift the camera up, then we can point it on there when you're talking about it. Uh, and I'll move the microphone okay. so I don't knock it anymore. Okay. So, ideas in action there, Tobal. Yeah. Right. Different different angle. Different angle. Oh yeah. my word. So. The head shining. It's about to shine. It's got no hair on it. <laughs> so, it's it's um, it's similar in design to the, uh, to the rally suit in as much as it's got zips all over it. It's got Velcro cuffs, it's got Velcro arm stuff on it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's got a big pocket in the back. Oh, you've got a, a that's bigger than the rally suit. Huge. Pocket, isn't it? It's huge. You can get your passport in there, can you? Easily, I think. I haven't tried it, but I'm sure you can. 
But this is a little bit different. Obviously it's got the reflective bits on it and all that kind of stuff. Now, let's talk pockets because we want pockets that are waterproof. Turn it around that way a little bit so I can... I can Turn it around in and the and the skin. Ah. That's so, it. There we go. In my Rooker suit, I only had two waterproof pockets in it. There were a couple of pockets inside, but there were only two waterproof pockets. So let's have a look at what this has got. In there, okay, in a chest pocket, and you can see the size of the chest pocket, easily a hand width, there's one waterproof. Oh, and it's waterproof as well. A waterproof zip. Yeah. We'll go down the sides at a time. Now, on this side, here is the, your hand, your... Oh, uh, you can see that that is waterproof. Um, waterproof zip. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We go on the other side, you've got the same. Then you have a zip that goes to a pocket that's on the outside, but isn't waterproof. Oh, that's a shame, because that, I presume that would be an ideal pocket for somebody with their wallet or phone or something like that. But wait, <laughs> because in here, you've also got another pocket. Oh, wow. and which is that, waterproof. And does that go out to this silver it strip? It goes all the wow. way down here. It goes down here, actually. That's good. Okay. Yeah. There we go. You've got a little thing there if you've got a water bottle on your back, a water oh, yeah. bag on your back. Now let's talk venting. We're still talk, looking at the front of the jacket. It's got a typical collar, you know, button, press stud collar, and it's got a zip. Look at this vent here. It goes all the way down the suit. Wow. <laughs> that's massive. Now, does that open right out? No, no, that's as far as it goes. Oh, that's nice because on, on my Klim, when you open it, it's really quite free. Yeah. And it goes right through to the back one and it's almost like having two parts of a jacket on. This jacket has got some real special things about it. I lo I'm loving it, honestly. <laughs> it's stiff as a board when I got it. It's getting a bit better now. Okay, to close the, to adjust the jacket in its width, because it is a bit baggy at the bottom, but then it's not that much of a problem as I explain why. Okay, it's got press studs there. So, same on the other side. Yeah. Okay, and now we look at the arms. The arms, as you already pointed out, it's got this lovely, it's not waterproof. Yeah. But it's got this thing, uh, this pocket that a lot of BMW jackets have. It has a waterproof zip on behind wow. that for venting. <laughs> All right. So that's and pretty cool. Being the angle, that's probably really easy to open and close, or at least open when you're riding without having to stop. Yeah. It's obviously got the um, press studs for making the jacket smaller. Yeah. This is anti-scuff stuff. I can't remember the name of this stuff, but I should I should do. That's good. That's probably got ceramic and stuff in it. It has. It? it has. My grandson thought it was sparkly. So he was very. Is that why he bought it? Yeah, obviously. You can't have enough sparkle in your life. Okay. Now, I've got another zip somewhere. Oh yeah, there it is. There. Look. Okay, at the back on the back of the arm, there's another waterproof vented zip that opens up, but it doesn't open all the way up. It just does that. But I like that because I've had every time I've been in Spain over the last two or three years with my Klim open front and back, I've got bee stings. They've come in, they've got trapped and stung me. <laughs> oh right, so you can't That's get in. Stop that. However, if you open that one on the front. And at the back, you'll get a free flow of air. Mm. The, pop, the sleeves are pretty cool as well. Lots of poppers, so this opens really wide. But inside, you have a cuff. Okay, and the cuff oh, nice. is zippable. So that can zip over the top of your uh, gloves. So that's taking the rucker stuff a little step further. Where you've Huge got step further, open. because you can have all this flapping around yeah. and just Velcroed here like that. You can have that on, okay, and it's attached to the top of your jacket, but it's this little thin venti stuff, so wind will be forced up the sleeve, out through this vent at yeah. the back here, and out through the vent at wow. the top. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, so that's the sleeve, and it's the same yeah. on the other sleeve. Let's talk about the inside there, because okay. this is where it gets really special. I don't think I've seen you this excited for a long time. Oh, there you go. So, we have just a standard zip. Full, full length zip, goes all the way to the top, as you would imagine. 
But inside, there's another zip. Oh yeah. Okay, and what this does, if you're riding in a hot climate, by using this zip, like that, you can leave the front of your jacket open. Wow. <laughs> then this is vented. And I've spied another pocket. There's another pocket. There's, a, there's lots more, okay? There's another pocket there. It's not waterproof. It doesn't connect to anything that's already out here, so yeah. it's just another pocket. But that's a pretty cool idea, isn't it? Yeah. So you don't have to have the main zip undone. Uh, open. Uh, zipped up. Something. And some people will say, has that got the same integrity if you were to come off? That material's quite sturdy, but yep. because we ride with the headlight jackets on top, it's not going to come apart anyway. Not at all. Let's open the jacket. Let's what? What else yeah, have we got? That's quite intro, isn't it? No, like lines. This and... is a thermal layering of some sort. It's got a proper name. You can look it up on the internet mm. somewhere. All right. This is designed. The whole suit is designed. It's like a. It's not Gore-Tex, but it's a something similar, and it's made by a Swiss company who um, make the sort of stuff that goes up Everest. Oh wow! All right. And what it's designed to do is. When it's cold, the cells in the jacket, particularly this bit here, get smaller to keep the heat in. Mm -hmm. And when it gets hot, they expand to let, allow the heat out. How cool is and that? And I can feel that they're kind of um, not sticky. Um, they've got some resistance there, more than the smooth stuff. So yep. when you're riding around, it's not going to jump up and down. Yeah. Now, this is the backpack, the back plate. It's quite a huge, I'll put it that way around so you can see. So it's a huge, it's not D30 or anything like that, it's, it's BMW's own, okay? It's very flexible, very, very flexible, but I've taken it out because my Halite jacket doesn't need it. So that's out of there. This is what I like about it. A cumber band. A cucumber band, okay? A Preston cumber band, which clips over, so it keeps the jacket nice and snug. Yeah. And, and do you also, know, do you know, on. not having Velcro on these, because on my clear, I find that the Velcro gets, they put the, rev, the hooks on the wrong side, so the hooks get stuck to your t-shirt or your shirt, or whatever you're wearing, oh, and right. rips, rips it apart. But look at the bottom of the jacket here. Those of you who go skiing a lot will see that it's got that rubber thing. And it is really rubber, isn't it? What that does is it sticks to the tops of your trousers, so it doesn't pull your trousers up. But look again! It has two zips. Okay, so this zip attaches to the top of your trousers. Mm -hmm. Okay, for like summer riding. But it has this monstrous zip which goes all the way around the top of your trousers. Yeah. For winter riding. How cool is that? That's pretty good. So even my rucker stuff only had a crappy little zip on it. That's really good. There we are. It has a low back, so it's cut yeah. down low on the back. And then we'll turn it over, because that's special as well. You ready for this? I'm ready for this. I'm working out the area of safety net. Get that. Turned over. Okay, so. Underneath here, you've got the zippy pocket. What do they call that? Is it just a... I don't know, like a bum pocket or something like that? It's quite big, isn't it? It's big. It doesn't have to be opened up or anything like that, but it's good, handy for putting your butties in, I suppose, or you know, your rain gear, although you wouldn't Lots need... Lots of people put mats and things in there, don't they? Okay, so... Vents. Massive, massive Waterproof rear vents. vents. Waterproof <laughs> vents, look at those. And they only open a certain amount. But you can see you it's vented. But you don't want them flapping. No, no, you? of course you don't. One either side. Okay, yeah. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Has it got a hood now, has it? Oh mate, you wanna you wanna see this. Inside this zippy thing here. Okay. And I don't know any other jacket that has this. Yeah. Is this. What, now what do they call them? Like not snoods. A do rag or something like that. No, like <laughs> the, the ninja hats. Okay, a ninja hat. What this does. It goes up inside over your head. It's very stretchy, but it stops the rain running down the back of your neck. Because <laughs> this material down here keeps the jacket up. is waterproof. Wow! So you can put it over the top of your under your helmet, but over the you know over the top of your head. And yeah. then if it's really really bad weather, 
this waterproof material here stops it running down inside the back of your jacket. Wow. Which, which, to be fair, is an issue that I've never, ever had. But some people do. Yeah. It depends on the shape of your helmet, your crash helmet, and all sorts of things. And it's just in a handy little zip it's in there. quite clever, isn't it? Fits in there. Someone's obviously had a bit of thought about this, haven't they? Well, the Germans, they just they think about these things. You are. So, the collar is nicely padded. Yeah. I'll just stack all this away, because if you don't, it doesn't look right. Okay, collar's padded, it's got no fancy bits on it to hook it open or anything like yeah. that. But this top collar then pulls down over the top of the zip. So, How do you find this? Not a problem at all. Because on the rally suit that I had years ago, that used to get quite annoying. No, it's, it's not bad. Put it. And even a hanger, so you can hang it and it's got a press stud hanger as well, you know, so it, it's substantial. That's the thing Is about it heavy? It. it is a bit heavy. Yeah. I won't lie, it is a bit heavy, but you know, I can put up with heavy. I'm only sat on a bike. Yeah. And I've got um, uh, a Hellite vest on top of that. The thing about it is all the venting. Now, trolleys, let's talk about trolleys. Trousers. A few people have complained about this little hook, hook and eye thing here for, for fastening it, but you know, I don't think there's anything you need any more than that, to be honest. Does but it feel loose when you've got it done? No, no, because really some of the BMW trousers, they they're kind of a weird shape, aren't they, around your hips? Yeah, no, these are okay. Uh, just a normal zip, nice yeah. big fly cover over the front, adjustable. Velcro bits to keep them tight. It doesn't have the facility to put um, braces on, but mm. I haven't felt the need for that. And then we get to these zips. So here's the big long zip that goes all the way around the top of the trail yeah. to zip onto the bottom of the jacket in the winter. And here's the little small zip. It just goes around the top of the trousers to zip in during the so summer. That's quite a good idea, isn't it? Yeah. It's got all this mesh stuff inside, yeah. which means it's gonna stay cool when you're riding in it. And you've got the armour in there for your hips and your knees. It's got hip, hip armour. Yeah. And BMW is, is well known for its massive armour. Yeah, are they, are they as big as the rally suit armour? I think it's probably the same stuff, but it's made of that floppy stuff, which I is see, here. I which see. is all, this stuff here, look, the original rally armour was solid, if you remember, yeah. but this is all. Because I used to find that ra the rally suit, that the, um, the knee protectors were that long, they used to go in and bang on the top of my boots when I was walking. Okay, I haven't had that. Oh, that's good. But they are long, definitely yeah. long. Pockets. Got a very, very small pocket here at the top of the... Yeah. I mean, it is small, it's just that, you know, that deep. Yeah. So not really for very much at all. Um, then on the legs, it's yeah. got these huge waterproof pockets. And that presumably goes all the way down to there. Goes all the way down. Wow. So big long pockets, all the way in. Yeah. Okay, so my finger is now here. Yeah. Which is very nice. Obviously they're very stiff. And then there's vents. Vents on the front, again, waterproof zips. Again, they don't open all the way out. Yeah. Okay, it's lots of space in there for to allow them to come through. The legs, big baggy legs. You know, some people, some trousers are really a pain in the neck yeah. to try and get over your boots. These are enormous. And they have press studs to adjust them. Okay, three on the bottom, oh, two there. Good, yeah. All right, just normal press studs and that's fine. Now underneath, okay, it's like a snow gator. So it's the same principle as your arms. Same so principle. This is attached to the bottom of your trousers, so you can't get them, you can't take them off. Yeah. But you can see there, there's that mesh. All right? Yeah. That zips over the top of your boot. So it's waterproof. Yeah. Okay, it's like a, a nylon waterproof material, and then that goes over the top of that. Nice. So it's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Inside the leg, you've got this grey leather. Mm, uh, for just like um, suede. It is, but yeah. it's leather. Okay. <laughs> the grip in the tank. All right, good solid 
crutch on it. I mean, you know, the crutch is waterproof as well because it's all made of this Gore-Tex stuff. I'll just pull that down so I forget that otherwise. And turn them over. Okay, and on the backs of the trousers, You've, oh, you've got, got more vents. More vents. Well, that's good because that will go right through then. So there you go. It comes right the way through, and again, yeah. it doesn't open fully. It's just that little bit there. Quite like the shape of those. They're Very really nice. nice. Really nice. I love them. Well, I don't think that I've seen you so excited about a bit of bike kit that you're actually going to wear for a long, long time. But I really quite like them. They. There's a, there's a lot on there that is very rally suit esque, isn't there? You know where things are, and little things like this little BMW um, motif where it is. It looks like a real big step up from those rally suits. The thing about the rally suit is it's an awesome suit. Hmm. You know I've, I've had two of them now. It's absolutely brilliant. The only problem I find with it is the waterproof stuff. You have to put on on the inside, or yeah. you zip it up on the outside, which just makes the outer really, really wet. And really heavy. And heavy, yeah. so this is all this new Gore-Tex, whatever it is, not Gore-Tex, it's a Swiss make. I should find out the name of that, but you know, short term. Do you think that you're gonna be wearing your thigh pouch with it? Or is there enough pockets to not use your thigh pouch? I've been wearing my thigh pouch with it. I've worn it, I've, I've done, a shift of blood bikes in it now, hmm. and I'm just about to start another one in a couple of days' time, and the weather is going to be foul. And I wear a pouch just because it's easy for what I do in the, with the blood bikes. When I'm on tour, I think I'll be able to get away without having to use all the um, the, the the pouch because you know the pockets for the blood bikes. Just spotted me. something. Oh, you have. There is a little loop there. Now I'm guessing that that's if you've got a carabiner, you could put your keys on there. Yep, when you walk away. Yep. Now, something that somebody explains to me about the front as well. There's a little, the waterproof pockets are, if you've got keyless ride, Yeah. the waterproof pockets on the front are ideal for that. Oh, okay. So, does this stack up to your rucker suit in terms of, we don't know about waterproof yet, but it's gonna be waterproof. I've been out in the weather and it, and it's, it is waterproof. Brilliant. Is it comfortable? Yes. Very comfortable, actually. Is it's it? stiff because, yeah. and it's hard because, you know, my Rucker stuff was five, six years old, whatever it was, and that was really soft and supple. But this is getting better every time I ride it. And is it gonna, it looks as though it's gonna be really warm, and you've got all of the vents to keep you cool when you need to be cooled. So, what's the price? I think it's about 1,300 pounds, UK. And I know that some people will go, well, they've just talked about spending £1,300 on a suit and they haven't batted an eyelid. We are not rich people. Far, far, far from it. But if you're doing... We, we do a lot of miles. I, I worked it out how many miles I'm doing a year. 45? About forty to 40,000 miles a year. And that includes tours, my own riding, blood bikes. Yeah. And so for me, 1300 quid. Is well, well worth it. and the thing is, you could go and spend a hundred pounds on a suit because there are really good suits out there for a hundred, two hundred pounds. Absolutely, aren't there? there must be. It depends what makes you. You've got to be comfortable when you're riding, and you've got to make sure that you've got the adequate protection if, if the worst was to happen. But more importantly, I think that people underestimate the fact that you should be comfortable, not cold and not wet. Because when you're riding, I mean, you, you know more than I do because you ride more in the rain. Um, if you're wet and you start to get cold, your ride suffers because you start thinking just about, oh, I'm cold. And before you know it, you're 10 miles down the road and you don't know how you've got 10 miles down the road. And it really does change your focus and your concentration, doesn't it? I, uh, I've got a quick story. I, I picked, I finished... <laughs> I finished work one, one night really really late at night and when I got back to um, I was truck driving and I dropped the truck off at a place called Callington and I had to drive home uh, down into Cornwall and I drove from Callington to Bodmin where you joined this road, road the A30 it's probably mm. 15 miles yeah about that something like that and it was snowing so by the time I got to Bobbing, I didn't have any of this kit. I was just, you know, making do as you always do. Yeah. I was so cold. So I had to stop the bike, 
just before I got onto the A30 and I was stood at the back of the bike with my hands, warming my hands on the exhaust, you know? And I was like, oh, you know, it's so cold, so cold. My hands were really, really bad. And the next thing I was lying on the floor. I woke up lying wow. on the floor. And what it is, because your body, when it closes down, it draws all, all the blood from your extremities mm -hmm. to keep the main bits warm. Well, obviously, by heating my hands up, I'd taken blood away from the Blimey. rest of the body. Suddenly, I collapsed. But then you break out, and if you ever have hypothermia, you break out in sweat sometimes. So I got on my bike, mm -hmm. you know, got myself sorted out, and, and I drove from Bodmin to Newquay, which is what? Nine miles at that? Yeah, if, if that. that. Six yeah, yeah. on the A30. And all the sweat that I had had frozen <laughs> inside my gear. And so when I got home, I was nearly hypothermic. I was just in such a state. And at that point, I said, Enough no more that. putting jumpers yeah. on, no more making do with crap, you know, stuff you can buy, yeah. you know, for 10 quid and hoping that'll do. I don't care what it costs, I have to invest in proper money, yeah. in proper suits. So that's what I've done. So £1,300, a lot of money. For the miles I do, justified. Bearing in mind my rucker suit was about the about same that. price five, six years ago. Yeah. Okay, and I've only just got rid of it. Yeah. And it's still working because it's you know it's a really good suit. I agree with you, but that's not to say that you should rush out and get a suit that's beyond what you want to spend for it. Absolutely. You I mean, should, if you're you should always get in the summer. You you're only riding yeah. in the summer and you're not going abroad, you're not doing, you know, there are suits out there. There's a yeah. suit for everybody and there's a, a suit to match everyone's budget. I like it. It's I nice. will say that BMW are doing 0% finance on it, but I'm not selling it for them, you know, because, no. um, you know. Well, time will tell. The suit will sell itself, won't it? Yeah. Lots of good reviews on the, uh, on the internet. There's a guy from mm -hmm. Finland who did a fantastic review. He was two years old, this suit, so it's not a new... Yeah, star suit, and he was so pleased with it. He was buying it. He'd been all around Europe, all over. He's been everywhere, and um, he was buying his wife one. If you're going to buy your wife a suit, <laughs> you've got to make yeah. sure it's right. It's, so good, it's it? taken him two years to decide that. But there you so, go. when do we give it away? Um, wrong video. <laughs> in five years. <laughs> now, so. really, really nice suit. Really nice suit. I like that. Love it. Yeah. Right. There we go. Thank you, BMW and uh, Ocean Falmouth, for selling it to me. I'm sure they're saying thank you very much for giving them the money. <laughs> <laughs> Eva worked really hard to get me the suit that I wanted. And it fits really well. And there's lots of different sizes. So. Brilliant. If you like it. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Yeah, if need there's, that. I'll do a bit of research to see if I can put any of the, some of the specs and they would have been on the video. What you're actually before, saying yeah. there is I'm really slack and I'm done any. Well, no, because it was a surprise today, you saying that you wanted to do your suit. Yeah. I, re I really like it. Cool. I like that. See you soon. See ya.